Okay, so this example is an initial value problem for systems because I have given you the initial value and I wrote this differential equation in the matrix form but whichever form I write you should be able to convert one to the other so this one if you do across down you see that this is really saying x1 prime is x1 minus 7x2 and x2 prime is negative 5x1 plus 3x2 so uh, I could have written this as the question or I could have written this as the question and sometimes you will be asked to convert between the two so you have to be able to do that uh, so let's solve this as usual, we will find the eigenvalues first. So I'm going to do 1 minus lambda, negative 7, negative 5, 3 minus lambda. And its determinant has to be equal to 0. So that gives you 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus negative 5 times negative 7 equals to zero. And then you have to foil this out. So one times three gives you three. One times negative lambda gives you negative lambda. Negative lambda times three gives you negative three lambda. Negative lambda <coughs> times negative lambda gives you positive lambda squared. Five times seven is 35, there's a minus. And if you organize this nicely, you're going to get lambda squared minus four lambda minus 32 equal to 0. And I think uh, 4 times 8 is 32 and their difference is negative 4. So this one can be factored as lambda minus 8 lambda plus 4 giving you the, the two eigenvalues 8 and negative 4. Okay. Now, let's find the eigenvectors. The first, when lambda is 8, you plug in 8 here and here. 1 minus 8 will be negative 7. You get negative 5. Some column vector AB equals to 0, 0. And the very first line gives you negative 7a minus 7b equals to 0. So if you plug in 1 into a, you're going to get b as negative 1 because uh, when you move the 7 to the other side and then divide by negative 7, you end up with negative 1. So uh, here we see that the eigenvector is 1 and negative 1. Okay. Now let's try to figure out what happens when you have lambda equals to negative 4. When you plug in negative 4 here, that's positive 5. Uh, negative 4 here is positive 7, so you end up with 5, negative 7, negative 5, positive 7, a, b equals to 0, 0. And, uh, if you read off the top row across down, it gives you 5a minus 7b equals to 0. Now, uh, in a lot of examples I've done so far, I usually just put a as 1 because there are infinitely many solutions. I just want one solution. So if you do a equals to 1, this time it's not good because you would end up moving the 5 as negative 5 and dividing by negative 7, you have a fraction b equals to 7 over, no, b equals to 5 over 7, which is not so good. So instead of plugging in 1, we want to plug in a different number this time. Do you have any suggestions? Seven, yeah, seven. So. Um, the rule of the thumb is uh, 
first make sure that this is reduced to the lowest terms. Like this one, if you reduce to the lowest terms, if you divide both sides by negative 7, it's just a plus b, right? And then whatever the coefficient of b is, just choose that as your a, then you will always get an integer number, okay? So that, that's your strategy. Just look at this 7. You don't care about the sign. You could put negative 7. That's fine, too. But I just want a to be positive. So I, I'm going to put a as positive 7. And if you plug in 7, 5 times 7 is 35, and you move it to the other side as negative 35 divided by negative 7, b is equal to 5, right? But that's obvious because 5 times 7 minus 7 times 5 will be 0. So you know that b could be 5, a could be 7. That says that your, your uh, eigenvector is 7, 5. Okay, so we're almost there. Now we have the general solution, which is x1, x2 is c1 times the eigenvector times e to the power of the eigenvalue times t and c2 7 5 e to the negative 4 t and to this we want to plug in x1 0 x2 0 Okay, so if you plug in t equals to 0, what happens here? If you plug in t equals to 0 and t equals to 0, e to any power, e to 0th power is always 0, uh, no, 1, right? Anything to the 0th power is 1, that's what I want to say, okay? So e to the 0th power is 1, e to the 0th power is 1, so you end up with c1 times 1 negative 1 plus c2 times 7, 5, has to equal to x10 and x20, but x10 is 20, x20 is 16. So that's the equation that we have to solve. So let's write down what that means. Okay. So let's write down what that means. x10 is 20, x20 is 16. Now, if I multiply c1 to this, and c1 to negative 1, and c2 to this, and c2 to 5, and combine them together, what do I get on the top? c1 times 1 plus 7c2. And the bottom, that's negative c1 plus 5c2. And that just gives you a system of equations which you can solve, right? And this one, I made it so that it, it, it will be easy to solve. What's the, easiest sol what's the easiest way to solve this? Add them, right? Add them, that's 36. These cancel and you have 12 C2. So that C2 would be 3. 36 divided by 12 will be 3. And then you plug that into any one of these. If I plug in C1 here, no, no, C2 is 3. 3 times 7 is 21, and you subtract C1 will be negative 1. So uh, you have 20 equals to C1 plus 7 times 3, which says that uh, C1 is 20 minus 21, because 7 times A is 21. So you get C1 as negative 1. And therefore, the final answer would read as x1, x2 is equal to, no, let me rewrite it so that I can clearly mark it as an answer. So the answer is uh, x1, x2, c1 is negative 1, so it's negative 1 times 1, negative 1, e to the 8t. c2 is 3, so it's 3 times 7, 5, e to the negative 4t. Okay. So that's the solution. However, uh, 
depending on the question, they might accept this one. E even for uh, web work questions, I, I haven't assigned any homework on this one, but even for uh, online homework, sometimes they would accept this one, but more likely they're going to ask what x1 is equal to and x2 is equal to. So if you can't say that, uh, if you don't know what x1 and x2 are as functions, what good is, is it to have this solution, right? So you have to be able to read off the x1 and x2. So what, what is x1? Can you tell me? Negative e to the 18. Negative 1 times 1, which is negative e to the 18. Plus, plus 7 or 21. which is 21. E to the negative 3 14. times 7 is 21, right? And then you have e to the negative 14. Whereas x2 is what? Negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive 1, so that's e to the 18. And then 3 times 5, that's 15. e to the negative 14. So that is often the answer. Uh, even during the exam, I would probably ask you to write your answer in this form. And if you stop this here, I'll take like one point off or something. Okay. So that's how you solve a uh, initial value problem.